Okay, last but not least is sophomore quarterback Jake Heaps, who uh, has taken the mantle upon him of quarterback. What's that pressure like now that you're in year two of being the BYU quarterback? And today you've you've chatted with Steve Young and Ty Emmer and all these guys. Yeah, it's it's really been amazing. I mean, it's, I mean, what a what a different a year makes. You know, it's it's just a totally different uh, feel and a different vibe. Um, just just really lucky to be out here, and, and I'm I'm very uh, excited about the, this season. It's going to be fun. You're looking pretty tan. That's not makeup we Thank have you. on no, you. This You're is looking, makeup. Where this were, is... uh, you got married recently? Tell, yeah. tell us so when. I went, and... So I went down to the uh, Caribbean uh, for a cruise. Uh, so that, that was really fun and had a good time down there. And So, yeah, just got a little tan. Need, 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 needed to happen. So What day fun. did you get married again? Uh, June 25th. Congratulations yeah, on thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's start with our first email. This one from Dave Roberts. He says, "How do you think being married will help you become a better leader and quarterback?" Um, I think it will just keep me keep me a little more focused. I think uh, you know, uh, not running around, you know, um, just uh, late nights and stuff like that. I think it's just you know going to help me just uh, you know relax and, and just you know keep my head and, and uh, just uh, concentrate a little bit more. And, and you know, I have a little bit more to play for. Uh, Let's see, what did you change uh, mid-season last year uh, to turn the season around personally to uh, get the offense going? Well, I think that's one of the, I think that's one of the uh, common misconceptions out there is there wasn't anything that I changed. There wasn't anything that I did differently. It was, you know, I, I stayed the course on who I was and, and, and what I needed to do to, to, to be successful, and I just continued to work and work and work. But if you look back at the situation of what I was stepping into, um, you know, it, it was very difficult. Um, not only coming into a situation as a true freshman, going to a quarterback battle, um, splitting reps, um, stepping into that situation. Uh, by the time I started in week four, um, you, you count spring, off season, fall camp, even some of those game reps. You know, all those types, uh, all those reps right there. Um, I probably was stepping in as the starter with probably one third of the reps than an average starting quarterback. Um, so that that in itself was a difficult situation. On top of being a true freshman, on top of uh, twittering between two different style of offenses because Riley was so different from me. Right. Um, you know, so at that point, our our offense is really in a limbo. Just just based off that, we we don't know what direction we're supposed to go with our offense. So, um, you know, basically we're just trying to catch up with reps and we're trying to catch up with trying to figure out our scheme and what we want to do and what my strengths were and what our personnel strengths are. And so, you know, I think that second half of the season where we just took off, I think you really saw us, you know, um, taking off in that manner because we'd finally gotten those reps. We'd finally gotten the chemistry together. So, um, you know, now looking forward, to that, um, now having all of the reps, now having most of the reps from this whole off season, um, you know, we're, we're looking to have a fun season right out of the get-go. And how much of a learning curve with that? Uh, I know Brandon Doman is a new offensive coordinator, but he hasn't he hasn't called plays previously, but he's right. been on the staff, so yeah. not yeah. as much of a learning curve since you know him already. Yeah, not not as much of a learning curve at all. I mean, our, our offense is going to be uh, it's going to be significantly better, and, and I'm excited for our fans to see. Our offense—it's it's, going to be a lot of fun, and and uh, uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna mash people in the run game, and but we're gonna complement that with a with a great play action game and a drop back pass game, and and be able to throw the ball down the field vertically, and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Peter Wright asks if you could switch one player from defense to offense, who would it be? From defense to offense. A great question. That is a good question. I'd have to think about that for a second. Um, I think if you. Uh, I think uh, Kyle Van Oy. I think if if I could position. if I could switch him to to maybe like a slot tight ends flex kind of guy. If you if you go back and watch his high school highlight tape, um, he was actually a really good receiver in high school. And, <laughs> and uh, so the, and when we when he first got here, they weren't sure what they were gonna do with him. Um, but um, you know he's he's fit perfectly at outside linebacker. So I think that'd be fun. Curtis Marshall says, do you have a Facebook fan page? Uh, I do have a Facebook fan page. I also have a, uh, a, a Facebook page that uh, is not of mine. Uh, you know, I have a, a fake Jake out there. That so has, there's a real Jake and yes, a fake Jake? Yes, there's a real Jake and a fake Jake. How and you know uh, the fake Jake actually has more friends than I do. So, <laughs> okay, that's yeah. nice. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's funny to see what he writes on there every now and then. And, you know, I keep mine pretty private and, and stuff like that. So, um, but it's just, it's, it's funny. It's funny to see that kind of stuff. Jeff Cole, what about this coming season excites you the most? Um, 
Gosh, I mean, you look at you look at the season and, and what it has in store for us. You know, going independent and. Uh, and, and being partnered with the worldwide leader in sports with ESPN, um, to be able to, for our fans to be able to see us week in and week out um, uh, on a consistent basis with these big games. Um, I mean, you, a lot of questions, the question I've been asked a lot is, what game are you looking forward to most this season? And you look at it and you're going, well, gosh, our, our opener was uh, versus Ole Miss September 3rd in SEC. You're playing a, a big-time SEC team. Then you look at Texas, and, and we're playing at Texas, and you got Utah, our home opener, and then you got Central Florida and, and Oregon State at Oregon State, and, and we, we play Utah State. We'd like to get that one back and, and, uh, and you know, TCU at Dallas Cowboy Stadium, and the list goes on and on and on, and, and it's just going to be so much fun this year for our fans and for us as players, and, and being an independent, every game game matters. Every game is, is a big game for us. It doesn't matter who we play. So I think that's always fun. Jonathan Gardner says, what cornerback has been particularly tough to go against in practice? Um, I, uh, I think they've all done really well. I think, I think our, our, our DBs have done extremely well. It's hard to replace an Andrew Rich mm -hmm. um, with his physical play and uh, leadership on the field. But our, I think uh, co coverage-wise, I think, I think our d defense is uh, DBs, I think the windows have been smaller um, in spring ball and, and seven on sevens, and, and, and uh, they've been doing a fantastic job. Preston Hadley's come in and done a, uh, a great job in, in the boundary corner, and, and uh, you know Corby Easton is still recovering from from his injury, um, so we're looking forward to having him back. But uh, we have a lot a lot of depth at corner that we haven't had in in, in a long long time. Once again, we're chatting with uh, BYU quarterback Jake Keeps. If you have a question for Jake. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash TV sports. Jonathan Anderson uh, asks, as a player, how much contact do you have with recruits, and what do you try to convey to them about the BYU experience if you're able to speak with recruits? Um, I, 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 when recruits come into town, um, I'll, I'll be around the offices, and, and I'll be, you know, I, I'm always willing um, at all times to talk to recruits and their families, and, and that's, that's a big deal to me. I want to I play with the best of the best, and, and I want to see our program succeed even after I'm gone. So I'm, I'm always willing to help with that. And, uh, um, you know, and what, what I tell them is just, you know, anything they have questions with, I just, you know, give them an honest and open answer. And, you know, with the recruiting, it's, it's such a crazy uh, deal. It's, it's such a crazy ordeal, and you have these coaches that it's their job to recruit you, and, and sometimes they'll say anything to, to tell you. And, and for me, having that experience and, and being recruited by almost anywhere in the country, um, I think I have a good insight on, on what the recruiting's like and, and be able to relate to, to that player and, and, and that particular family and just give them an honest and open answer and, you know, and, and uh, right. just you know, let them know what BYU's all about. And you've been quite the spokesman uh with some of the guys. I, I know Ross Oppo yeah. helping in and get him here. Yeah, so yeah. good stuff. It's, it's been great. Tyler Flake uh, says, will we uh, see Riley Nelson coming in for certain wildcat type plays? And I would add, how do you use his talents in the offense? Um, well, I, as of right now, we, we, we don't have a package in. Um, we don't have anything like that. Um, and uh, Riley's a, a talented player, and, and, and uh, certainly he makes plays with the legs, no question. Um, so uh, for me personally, I, uh, you know, I, I, I would love to remain on the field at, uh, all the time. But uh, you know, uh, for, for the team's sake, I, I have no idea what's, what's going to happen with that, and, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, another question from Tyler says, "How many uh, have any of the tight ends stood out in practice? I know people are waiting for some, at least some guy or guys to emerge as. Right. Hey, who's the Dennis Pitta, Johnny Harleen here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've had a great tradition of tight ends, and and it's very interesting because we have good tight ends, and we have about six of them all at the right, all at the same time. So, um, you know, it's it, it's been very interesting to watch that uh, develop, and and uh, they've continued to grow and develop. And I wouldn't say there's anybody that has." Necessarily stood out. I think I think they're all getting better, and I think they're um, understanding the game a little bit more. And, and I'm very, very excited to have Coach Reynolds as their as the tight end coach, and and uh, he'll coach them up. He'll get them right. Not having anyone emerge from a talented group is that a good problem, or would you prefer that one or two kind of stand out? I would love for one or two to stand out, mm -hmm. um, preferably. Um, but uh, you know, who knows? We'll we'll see what happens. It definitely won't be a switching man's game like we did last year, where we'll have all five of them play. It'll it will definitely narrow it down. 
now. And but some have changed positions, right? Um, like uh, yeah. Mike Muleman. Mike is Muleman's Matthews a receiver and not a tight end uh, anymore? Math- is he? Matthews is still a uh, I, – I would consider him a tight end. He, tight. He, plays, he plays more of a slug, flex tight end slot position. Okay. Um, and uh, so we're, we won't have as – we won't have a rotation like we did last year. We'll, 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 uh, we'll keep – we'll narrow it down. Get, I, I never played football, so uh, I would maybe I represent the fan – okay in this regard give us an example of a typical play call that you would call out at the line or in the huddle a typical play call would probably be like um, like a a run to juice uh, juice. off uh, the right guard pretty pretty simple we 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 keep everything pretty simple and Mm -hmm. then and then we can start getting into you know different motions and alignments and and you know different stuff like that but um you know probably one play would be i think one of Juice's uh, great plays is um, where we go. Uh, uh, we go. Let's see. What's what's the play that Juice scored on? Um, we call. It, we go green zip. We go green zip 77 or 76, and it's the same play, just right or left. And, mm-hmm. and so, um, and green's the formation, zips the motion that we would do out of that, and then um, and then the then the numbers are the are the are the is is the play of uh, the run play um and and then once once we get in, when, that's that's a basic play and so once the, the great part about what coach Doman's doing and we can tag more things we can do more things on top of that and and uh it's it's a lot of fun and, and add our play action game out of it and and it's just it's going to be so much fun to to play in this offense and and i'm really looking forward to it can you give me an advanced one um let's see uh, I'd have to think about it. I'm but putting you on the spot. Yeah, you are. You are putting me on the spot. But that's <laughs> got to make it tough. It's going to be good. tougher at Ole Miss. That's good. That's good. Um, we could go. Uh, let's go. Um, let's go. Uh, deuce. We'll go deuce shift. We'll do shift. Uh, zoom. Uh, 77. Rita. X over. That's that's something off the top of my head that's not the most complicated but so what was that? that's so basically is we do the formation shift we're shifting a tight end um uh to to one side of the field then we add zoom which is a, a certain a, a certain uh formational uh motion and then 77 read uh, rita would be um, so we're play actioning now. We're faking the 77, and we're, we're, we're play actioning. And then X over would just tell the X, the X receiver that he's got an over route. Hmm. So, and everybody has a certain route that they're supposed to run within, within that concept that, that they know. So, okay. and, and all we do Good is stuff. just tag the X with the over. So. Good stuff. Yeah. Didn't understand a word of that. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Gardner asks, uh, you were listed last year at 61194. What are you now? Well, they... Uh, yeah, they. Uh, I'm. I'm not six one. I wasn't six one last year. I was. I was. I was six two. So I'm six two. Okay. Um, two oh five right now. And uh, my goal would be up to get. My goal is to get up to two ten for the season. And so, you're married now, so yeah, I'm married s- suggested now. meals. Or well, something that's for the life. thing is, you know, it's it's not doing it the wrong way. It's doing it the right way, and and and, and uh, doing it with muscle, not yeah. fat, and <laughs> and uh, so we're we yeah, I'll definitely be fed well, but it, it won't be where I get where I get nice and plump, you know. Right. So it'll Sounds be good. good right? Yeah. Appreciate the time. Best of luck on the season, and thanks for the time. Hey, thank you for having me. Okay, thanks for joining us on VOATV.org. If you missed it, it's on our website. Thanks for joining us.